Hey everybody, Dr. Red here, back with some more Magic Arena. Just a quick little thank you. Thanks so much for watching. It's been quite a treat. Videos have been doing well. And we're going to be doing some requests today, at least one. First off, we're going to be doing some ranked best of threes. Haven't done any rank this season, so I figure may as well start grinding it out, at least at plat. That's kind of my half-ass non-committal goal each season. Secondly, we're going to be playing some vampires. So in this case, we're largely going to be stealing off of William Jensen's Vampire deck list. He was able to hit Mythic 1 with it this season. Of course, we're early in the meta. It might be less competitive as more dominant archetypes form. But for now, we're going to enjoy it while we can. So of course, we're playing a tribal deck. So we're going to have a lot of things playing out ideally in a curve. We have a lot of one drops. Newest one being Knight of the Ebon Legion. It's a 1-2 Vampire Knight for 1. You can spend 3 mana to get 3-3 three, three in Death Touch till end of the turn. And at the beginning of your end step, that's the important part, if a player lost 4 or more life this turn, put a 1-1 counter on him. On his own, uncontested, especially if you're able to hit face pretty, pretty regularly early, he can get counters, he can win the game all on his own. Good boy. As far as other new things, we're not really running much for other new stuff. We're running the new Soren, and that's the important key thing here. His uptick... 1-1 one, one counter on a vampire gets death touch and lifelink. Another outtick, you can sack one, ping them for three. Now you also gain the lifelink, which isn't negligible. Now the big money is, on turn three, you can down tick him for, with his minus three, and you can slam down another vampire. You can slam down a five drop at the cost of three mana, and it doesn't even kill him, so he's still going to be a threat on board. So assuming you manage to get the Champion of Dusk out, you get the value of all that card draw, ideally before your board gets swept by a control matchup, all that fun stuff. Let's see, now as far as cards I do not have, there is supposed to be a core 2019 Ajani in here. I'll just show the cards so you guys know who I'm talking about here. Let's see, in this case, it's four cost walker with four loyalty, counters on creatures, very similar to what we've seen before. More importantly, there's the recurring minus two, to get a creature card with a CMC of two or less from your graveyard. That's important because the majority of our creatures, with the exception of our Champions of Dust, meet that threshold. Sadly, I'm out of Mythic Wild cards, I can't make him. So what I did instead is sub in an additional Soren Vengeful Bloodlord. We lose the ability to generate the 1-1 counters, but it's more graveyard, re occur ugh, graveyard recursion. And of course, we can have lifelink which is fine, as well as do one damage pings as needed. And I think that was the only big change I made in the main board. The lands are as follows. You got your, your shrines, your check lands, some swamps and plains. Sideboard, I did have to change a bit. It had a another Ajani in it, and it also had some Vonas. And that's a card that I am not crafting three of these for a sideboard. There's other mythics that, I, that aren't rotating that I'd rather have than Vona, so... Sadly, we're going to be losing access to that one. But as it follows, we do have a few black accessible staples. Duress, if we're up against an obnoxious control matchup, dump their sweepers, dump their win con, smash face. Cast down, if we really have some key creatures we need removed. Legion's End is my own special inclusion. All depends on what we're, what we're up against. Token decks, wipe their board. Another aggro list where they're going to be possibly playing a bunch of the same one drops. Two drops, wipe the board, check their hand, dump them out. Noxious Grasp is good green-white hate. So it can destroy target creature or planeswalker that's green or white for two. The life gain is a little bit negligible. It's a little bonus. I'm not going to complain about it. We don't really have much for life gain synergies here, though. But this will be able to hit Nissa's. It's going to be able to hit Teferi's big and small. There's definitely targets that this will be very relevant to play against. D-Spark, same thing goes. It's going to be allowing us to exile big scary enchantments like Omniscience. It's going to allow us to get rid of Teferi's, get rid of Nissa's. Just more ways to hit them. Other things I've added. Vraska's Contempt. It's expensive, but catch-all removal to an extent. Another Soren if we're just playing up against no-fun control archetypes, which are just constantly wiping the board. We might need some more recursion to keep us going. Now, with that being done, let's get into a few games, see how this pans out for us. 
Okay, so jumping into our first best of three series against Cypher 22. Now let's see how this game goes for us. Likely we're going to be on the draw, which isn't ideal, but eh, take what we can get. Now let's see what we're looking at hand-wise. Mm. If we hit our land drop, we can play Soren on curve. I really don't like missing Knight of Ebon Legion on turn one, but with us being on the draw, there's a decent enough chance that we hit our swamp. So um, yeah, we'll see how that pans out for us. Sadly, doesn't look like that's going to happen, but we're, we are still going to be able to play Knight of Ebon Legion into Champion of Dusk. So that's kind of cool. And hitting that uh, fourth land drop lets us play Soren as well, the Vengeful Bloodborne. Bloodborne? A Bloodlord, there we go. We're up against a nice Esper opponent who very well might thought erasure us, that's fun. Here we are. Now let's hope they don't have a counter spell up. You picked a fight with an ancient vampire. We're just gonna be Lord. slamming down the champion now. Getting a couple cards drawing out of it. Drew into another Sorn Imperious Bloodlord, which is pretty solid because this guy might demand removal from our opponent. And at its worst right now. Playing another one, we can get another champion of Duska, which isn't nothing. That's definitely worth doing. They're shocking something in to get to fairy out. And what are they going to be doing? I know be my responsibility. Bouncing? bouncing our champion. Here goes nothing. Fair enough. Now what we can do is put a counter on I this boy. I bestow a mighty curse. Going to be getting rid of their to fairy. Only time will tell. And I think we are pretty content just getting down a Legion's Landing and a Godless Shrine. Depending on what happens next turn, we very well might just slam down our Soren Vengeful Bloodlord. They don't have double black, so they won't have Cry. Yeah. If we didn't play in that Shockland, we could have kept that one alive too, which is a bit of a bummer. Well, let me see what we can do. We have another knight here. We can do that. Do this. Put a counter on this boy My here. Bloodline flows through here. Swing on in. For two. And resolve a sore and vengeful bloodlord. My heart is hollow with Doesn't cost as much you. just to try to recur this knight here. Excellent. I'll be sad if we get swept or cry of the carnarium, but we have options of what we can and can't do here. Like, we have the potential to pump both of our Knight of the Ebon Legion this coming turn. Just with our available mana. Definitely should have done something with the Sorins first. So we're flipping our Legion's Landing, which is very good against control. So we're just going to pump one. He's probably going to respond to that in some way, shape, or form. He's going to mortify one. There we go. We're still getting six in, which will get another counter on our knight over here. They're not low enough that either of this is super relevant to us. So let's just spread out our counters here. Get some your pinging soul. off. The weak feed the strong. So yeah, Knight of the Ebon Legion is getting pretty scary. We did have a Cry of the Carnarium. Thankfully, we got our creatures above the point where that can remove them. It does look like our opponent is missing his second swamp here, which is good for us. So let's see, what do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We have access to 8. So again, spreading out our counters this here a little bit. This is but a taste of my power. Let's just get this Legion Lieutenant down. Doesn't look like opponent has anything they can do here. 
so we're just going to get a big whopping with our Knight of Ebon Legion. Like I said, for a one drop, the fact that it can, if you flood out as much as we did, still do something for you, it's pretty amazing. Now, what do we know about our opponent here? They are playing an Esper Control list. They're probably going to be running walkers with the uh, Oath of Kaya. So let's just forward in our duresses. Now, let's see. What dies if they look at it funny here? We like our Legion's Landing. If we can flip it, it's a recurring threat. Protection against board wipes. Danto's really good. D-Spark has a home. What do we cut? Now, what doesn't interest me in what we are running here? It's hard, because I really like everything, except Duskborn, Sky Marcher. I feel like that's one of the deck's weakest cards, to be quite honest. I think we are fine going down. A Soren. Legion Lieutenants are pretty weak. They don't really let us end the game early. Maybe we'll drop a Duress. Yeah, this seems fine to me. I'm not really 100% sure how I'm supposed to be sideboarding in these matchups. There was definitely the option for the noxious whatever to remove target blue or green creature slash walker. Blue or white? Green or white? Yeah, I think green or white. Now let's see, for drops, eh. Ideally we hit a land drop, but this is a pretty aggressive opener. It does fall apart quite horrifyingly to board wipes, so we'll have to play that by ear. I would like to see another planes here. Thought Erasure, what are they going to get rid of? Legion's Landing, okay, so that makes me think that they have board wipes and that's a recurring threat. Um, so as much as I'd love to play a Danto, I'm a little bit scared of a Cry of the Carnarium because I can still get rid of it. This gets more damage out this turn, and I feel like damage early is pretty valuable in this matchup. It will suck to lose the Legion Lieutenant to a Sweeper. Our set, not a Sweeper. We have that going Those who cannot least. keep an open mind. There we go. They have a Kaya who does pretty damn well against us, but thankfully, we have a Duress. So let's take a look at what they have Cooking in here. Kaya can be ridiculous. We don't have any tokens, so Teferi's just a stalling tactic. Mortify. Let's just get rid of Kaya. Give some that life gain. And they don't have any really good thing to hit our Adanta with as far as just undisputed removal is concerned. We don't have access to anything for card draw. Currently, so I don't really see the you need to full-on waste uh, extra damage killing their set. Ah, the top deck cry of the Carnarium. That, that's a real blow to us, not gonna lie, you guys. It's okay. I wouldn't say we have straight gas, but we have playables in hand. Downside is our token here. There's a decent chance they just play their three fairy. Bounce the token, get their card draw. Go from there. Almost guarantee show that's remorse, their course here. I'll show restraint. There Trust we go. I have he has a plan. His card draw makes his land drop. I'm assuming. Champion of Dusk, not something we can play currently, sadly. Don't want their Teferi getting in action, and I'd like to. Or at least have D Spark available to us at instant speed. Because yeah, we're definitely gonna have to get rid of their Teferi. I am not going to sit this one out. That makes me think that with them down taking just off the cuff like that, that there's you a decent chance to get another one or a backup Teferi available to them. This is one of our better top decks. If you threaten Innistrad. Because at least the uh, champion of Welcome Dusk to the set. family. Forgot about our set. At least the champion is a 4 4 body that is relevant. You're going to down take our champion of Dusk? I know my responsibility. Reverse! Yeah. Alright. Now let's see. I'm not super keen on this line of play. 
but I think it is quite important for me to take the Raider with me. I have other obligations. That was his insight. It's going to help us find something else. But so far, they've gone through two fairies. Is it? I think two to fairies. Yeah. So we have that going for us at least. I and this might demand them curse. to use Mortify on our Aspirant. But yeah, that's where that, yeah, I figured that's where that was going to go. I was going to say Soren will let us cast this These champion of Dusk, but not so much anymore. So this is going to be a dead draw, at least for, or rather, at best for two more turns after this coming one. And that's assuming we hit back-to-back -back land drops. Never mind, we can ignore him. This um, Champion of Dusk never existed. Uh, thankfully, we're in a position where they are still looking for a win con. Whereas us, at least with our three open mana, we can... Never mind. <laughs> so far, they've had removal for every threat we've played. This isn't a fight you can win. And now they Let's are going to be this. able to recur Oath of Kaya. Yeah, I think we scoop this round for now. Yeah. I feel like there is technically still a chance for us to come back, but it's, to me, not worth it. Now, what would I change in my current list here? The issue is I can't play the game of does or doesn't die to Cry of Carnarium, because everything we have, with the exception of... Champion of Dusk and Knight of the Evan Legion after it's gotten a counter does so not great for us potentially we want our other Soren just for more recursion but if we don't no, I think we're fine with two for now let's see what do we want Noxious Grasp over what would we get rid of here we don't really have too many Mortify targets outside of this Kanto. And that one, uh, the uh, champion there, is only really worth playing if we can cheat it out or actually hit our land drops. And not die over and over and over to board wipes or removal. So we're definitely going to go on the play first. We have Knight into a Danto, into a Legion Landing, plus whatever we draw. I'm pretty okay with this to start with. If nothing else, we can almost guarantee, based on the removal package they run, that we will at least get one swing off of our vanguard, and that's assuming they just have cry on turn three. We are swinging with our Knight of the Ebon Legion. Well, let's see, how scared of sweepers are we here? Are they going to thought raise us? No, they're going to be searching for his counter. Fantastic. Okay, so currently we have to figure out. We can get three in face and up to four. So we can do seven this turn, which I don't really think changes much of the game for us. I feel like it's more important, especially with us just drawing to more land now than we did all of our last game, to at least try to get it so that Legion flips. Uh, good news is we do get that uh, trigger on our Knight of the Ebon Legion. So if they do have Cry, the, I say only. The only thing they're killing is our token and our Vanguard. Oath of Kaya. Okay, that's probably going to be hitting our knight there, huh? Yeah, bummer. Okay, not for nothing. We are definitely flooding out a little bit. But unless they resolve a Narset, we're going to be getting some good card draw off of our Champions of Dusk. They don't quite have double blue for her yet, though, so that's good. So they're having Teferi come out. Are you going to be bouncing my token? Sorry, I'm late. Yeah, that's a hard choice to make, because the token you kill forever. 
This is Don't hitting you pretty hard this. and pretty reliably. Now let's see what we have available mana wise. I don't want to give them the ability to recur Oath of Kaya. I know we're healing them here and taking the shock to the I face. I suppose that's how it was meant to happen. But I'm hoping this is enough card draw. Just keep us going in this one. Because we'll have access to seven damage to face this coming turn. Okay, sorry, I had to take a phone call real quick. So it looks like they're getting rid of our other copy of Champion of Dust. They must not want us to refuel too hard. Something's holding priority. If I had to guess, it's a, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, Mortify, probably. Now let's see what we can resolve here. Is it a counter spell? I'm expecting removal on Champion of Dusk with the yeah, end. There's the Mortify. Okay. Now, the only thing I'm potentially scared of here is a Cry of the Carnarium. If they have spot removal for Knight of the Ebon Legion, shitty, but it is what it is. They do have a Flipped as Kanta. Are they going to be main phasing that? Nope, Teferi's going up. Trust me, you'll thank me later. Let's see, is he gonna bounce the knight? I'm okay with that. Man. No, I am not making this up as I go. Yeah, we have to do math because we can get him pumped up twice. So six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We can get them down to three HP this coming turn. And that's assuming they're not holding up Mortify mana. Yeah, I'm going to have to go under the assumption that they have mana for Mortify available. That's what's holding priority. Because they can't do anything with this Kanta currently. Okay, so we definitely have them on a clock this turn. They have to find a way to deal with... Both the Dantos. So what they need is a Cry of the Carnarium. Yeah, sadly that does do off our Unknight of the Legion. And buy them another turn. Yeah, definitely should have thought of the importance it. to holding up that pump defensively. I still think this is our game to lose at this point in time. Yeah, exile effects do still do that to us. And the life gain is annoying, still. Downside about D-Spark is it's instant and their Teferi is kind of becoming a problem. Here we go. I am probably going to have to remove Teferi, otherwise it will just Oath of Kaya, hit my face, heal for three, yada yada yada. We're gonna Thought Erasure. I've had this Legion's Landing here for so long, I just haven't been given the chance to resolve it. Hmm. Hey, bottom of land. Well, let's see. Would love to kill Teferi. That would be swell. No bouncing Oath of Kaya, please. Let me do my instant speed interactions with Knight of Ebon Legion and Beast Spark. Fantastic. Did 
Their main phase is canting, which is very good for us. That doesn't do it for them, thankfully. Now let's just PM them with our Dante real quick. Probably gonna have removal for this, but apparently not quite. We're gonna do that. We're gonna do that. One land short of having lethal, but at least we still have D Spark available to us. Kaya's Wrath does Kaya's Wrath thing. Okay. This is getting fun. I'm enjoying this. They have Insight, they have Ascanta. That'd be pretty cool to draw some specific creatures here. Of course now, again, we're playing to a board wipe, but... See what they are able to find. At least Champion of Dust goes over Cry of the Carnarium. Another Oath of Kaya? Another Oath of Kaya. Oh, it's a bummer. They're going to be able to hit both. Should I get rid of my own Champion of Dusk? I think so. Sorry about this. I should be muting this while I do streams. Do not disturb, please. I will do Risk of Rain with my... Homies later. Oh, God. I fucked up the timing on that. Cool. I will have this revenge is fun. For House this is a good time. I am loving every minute of this right now. So we're going to pay one. Recur a knight here. I require your body, not We have your the soul. mana available to keep it above. Yet another Oath of Kaya. Another Cry of the Carnarium. Not above that, though. So yeah, we just gotta take it easy. Our opponent has sweepers. We have to let them play their sweepers. This is probably greedy. I probably should just be going for a harder to remove threat. I demand. Like servitude. one of our just back to back Adanto Vanguards. But. I feel like they are running out of answers. And this could potentially end the game in a single turn. Homeboy to fairy doesn't quite let that happen. Timing. I'll protect you. That's fine. This is A-OK. -okay. He is ten cards deeper in his library than I am. Which is fine. Trust me, you'll thank me later. I can only we need to move quickly. This plays have actually made proper so far. The big one being just botching basically everything. Now let's see what can I do here, damage-wise. Swing in for four. So that would be two damage in. Get him down to four. Oh, I think this is lethal here. Five. Vampirism is a useful trait. We do that. See if they have counter magic. No, they don't. That's I have not me. survived a millennia to stand Okay, down so we made our own fair Didn't share of misplays this useful. game. But thankfully we're in gold, and my poor piloting can still get me the win. Okay, so <laughs> we won this best of the series. God, that was a grindy match. I still love you, Teferi. You're a really good boy. And yeah, it's going to be a shortish video, because apparently I'm getting dragged into Risk of Rain 2 with some friends, but let's open it with a booster pack. And a Ley Line of Sanctity. Okay, let's see if the Ley Lines actually do anything. But for now, I'm Dr. It. Thanks so much for watching.
Enjoy the grindy Esper matchup, and I'll catch y'all next time. Bye for now, everybody.